Let's talk about action and Western animation. The 80s, 90s, and 2000s were full of action-oriented, story-driven cartoons that often stood out from the episodic comedic cartoons that would eventually outnumber the fighty fighty. However, towards the end of the 2000s, going into the 2010s, things got a little tragic for these adrenaline-filled programs. There are three big factors often listed when discussing the fall of Asian Pat cartoons. The biggest by far being toy sales, alongside landing toy deals in the first place. The second being that the target demographics became more accustomed to video games for their fix on action rather than watching a television show. And third being that, what I'm going to say was for that time period, people apparently preferred the sitcom -y nature of episodic cartoons. The luxury of being able to throw on a random episode without being lost, as action cartoons tended to have ongoing narratives and tight continuity. Oh, how the tides have turned. To say action cartoons are dead would be a bit of an inaccuracy, considering we have or had recent shows like Rise of the TMNT, Lego Monkey Kid, Castlevania, Young Justice, Shira, Kipo, the list goes on. But action cartoons definitely don't have the presence that they used to. Hell, even with some of the aforementioned like Shira, the Young Justice revival, and to a further extent, most modern comic book TV animation, action isn't as much of a forefront as it used to be. The spotlight is now more likely to be even more on the characters and particular genre, i.e. drama or comedy. However, while action cartoons may not be the most popular animation out right now, an interesting development has happened. Back in the 90s and very much in the early 2000s, the episodic, comedy-driven cartoons would tend to implement action very sparingly, and that's not including slapstick. They would often use them for comedic purposes. It wasn't, oh shit, they're throwing hands, this is intense and awesome. It was, oh shit, they're throwing hands, and it's either hilarious or shocking to watch these characters scrap like this. So yeah, I guess still pretty awesome. The action was typically implemented as a joke. Not every show would do this. Some would feature action as a genuine badass moment. Billy and Mandy, for example, used action in both ways. But now, with showrunners and their teams growing up with larger influences on anime, manga, video games, anime itself becoming mainstream, thus appealing to target demographics, and serialization becoming much more prominent in these cartoons that were probably greenlit under the idea that it'd be mainly episodic, action has started to become a well-ingrained element in Western animation serialized or not, they tend to not come out of nowhere either. These shows either have action as a natural part of their premise, or are able to slowly ease into more prominent action elements thanks to the characters and rising stakes. This isn't exactly a large thesis statement, rather than an observation that I've been wanting to share. It goes hand in hand to a video I made earlier this year about Western Sakuga. But for the sake of this video being longer than two seconds, and avoiding the channel's watch time crumbling into nothing, I want to touch on just a few of the shows that aren't specifically action, but have displayed action on a consistent enough basis that viewers are going to probably brew higher expectations for the future. If your show didn't make the cut in this video, we can always do a sequel. I'd love to do a series where we just talk about awesome action scenes that's been popping up in cartoons. This is honestly just off the top of my head stuff. Also, keep in mind that due to time constraints, action scenes can be trimmed down or end up on the cutting room floor entirely. So if you ever think, damn, I wish this scene was just a little bit longer, it could have been. And with all that said, I want to issue a spoiler warning for various cartoons. I won't get too heavy into the spoilers of any series, but I will be putting some plot elements out there. With all that said, let's dive in. And I suppose the best place to start is the Owl House. I imagine it isn't a controversial take to say the Owl House is winning the action sequences game right now, but it isn't exactly a coincidence. Creator and showrunner Dana Terrace has discussed that on previous shows, such as Gravity Falls and DuckTales, she informed her crew that she can animate certain sequences as freelance if they wanted, and the shows took her up on that offer. Dana animating key moments in Gravity Falls, such as Ford exiting the portal and Bill Cipher's defeat. So when the Owl House was greenlit and in her production, Dana fought for this role that she previously only did as freelance to become a permanent position, a consistent in-house animator properly titled Animation Supervisor. In season one, the supervisor was the talented Spencer Wan, who just started his own animation studio, they did animation for a new video game Hades, and now he's working on the sequel to Spider-Verse. Congratulations, Spencer! 
Dana also animated some scenes here and there, and in every episode of The Owl House, you can find at least one moment that just really pops in animation, that juicy kind of fluidity and movement that we live for. So, what are some of these more prominent action scenes? Well, we have Ida vs. Lilith Round 1 in Convention, the first big fight of the series in my opinion, that showcased a spontaneous witch's duel between Ida and her sister. Seeing these characters zip around for the first time, casting spells, including a large hootie, it let us know that we were in a treat for the action sequences. And although it doesn't bore me nearly as much thanks to the show's other entries on this list, it still greatly excelled at what it needed to do, giving us a small sample of the ride that we're in for. A ride that continues into Enchanting Grom Fright, where Luz and Amity share a dance topped off by an abomination spelling glyphs in order to take out the wretched Gromethius. This is honestly a scene that I cannot get tired of watching. For the moment that pretty much fully committed to the idea of yes, we're doing this, you're looking at your screen right, this is on Disney Channel, making it a witch-tastic spectacle was nothing short of cathartic. Not only was this a display of the show following up on its premise from all angles, it also took the phrase, action speaks louder than words, to new heights for the channel. And it made me excited to see what these young witches can do, as their bonds and abilities continue to flourish in the future. There's also Ida vs. Lilith Round 2, which pretty much served to be a send-off as the last time we would see these witches at full power from their witches' vial alone. Although we may never see Ida like this again, this emotional battle riddled with tension single-handedly continued to get more people into the show. It was just enough for everyone to go buck wild. But now let's shift gears to a show that we've already said goodbye to, but can never get enough attention. OK KO. OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes was too good for this world, essentially being the perfect Cartoon Network show for anyone who grew up with the network in the 2000s and 2010s. If it just premiered a year earlier, like it probably totally could've, I honestly think it would've caught the attention of people who grew up in that period, but was starting to fall out with the network completely. The show itself was often caught between the two loves of Ian Jones Cordy, action adventure, and hilarious absurd bullshit that Cartoon Network excels at best. That being said, while fighting in action is in the show's DNA, the show knew it was best off never taking itself too seriously. So a lot of the typical action was blended in with shenanigans and visual gags galore, but there are still some great battles that happen throughout the series. TKO vs. Boxman Jr., for example. While there is some tension in the fact that TKO's power needs to be under control, this fight really just felt as if the team behind the show wanted to have a great time, and flex with rotating perspectives, hilarious blink and you miss it gags, and a soundtrack that's jamming even harder than usual. But a battle that does have immense tension and emotional stakes is my favorite fight of the series, PKO vs. Shadowy Figure. At this point, we still don't know enough about Shadowy Figure, but enough about Professor Venomous that we're just as invested as TKO in wanting to learn just exactly why he was created. How does TKO benefit Shadowy Figure? Both sides of KO working together, wielding this amazing anime s transformation that definitely earned more than two appearances in the series, yet still wasn't strong enough to take out Shadowy Figure then and there, was the exact kind of action I loved to see growing up, and the kind of action that was missing from Western animation for what felt like ages. And then there's flexes again, like Sonic the Hedgehog vs. Metal KO in the crossover episode Let's Meet Sonic. You thought the show was gonna have a Sonic cameo and not do the most with it? This scene just made a case for why we need a 2D animated Sonic series. Seriously, Cartoon Network or any big animation studio, what are you doing? Sega, Sonic Team, whoever needs to get it done, I'm begging. Alright, let's talk about the funny pickle show. Rick and Morty is a show that's able to be unapologetically itself, and as a result, we've seen something amazing but unusual for adult animation. To say action in adult animation is a foreign concept would be a bit of a lie, at least more than people realize. Again, it just tended to be used for comedy like all the Family Guy chicken fights, but with Rick and Morty, while the action scenes were always cool, they were sparse and felt more like parody at first. But that really began to change with Season 3 and especially Season 4. Action sequences in Season 3 began to become a bit more elaborate, and with Season 4, great looking action wasn't there every episode, but was 
absolutely frequent. To touch on some of my favorite examples of these action sequences in both seasons, the Citadel of Rex vs. the Galactic Federation was absolute bloody mayhem, and I loved every moment of it. Although you could argue it was still more comedic than serious, seeing all the different utilizations of the different Ricks and Mortys felt like the show pounding on its chest and saying, that's right, it's not just a dialogue and gag that can be clever. We can make the absurdity of Hammer Morty work in more ways than one. There's Death Crystal Morty vs. The World in the Season 4 premiere. While Morty taking out the bullies was still in the realm of comedy, the climax of the episode was one of those moments where Rick and Morty wanted to showcase both sides of a sci-fi concept. Yes, this thing could be absolutely hilarious, but these concepts can also converge into something absolutely terrifying. And there's Rick vs. Phoenix person in the Season 4 finale, a fight that didn't really feel that comedic, even with the one-liners here and there. It was storyboarded and directed in such a way where it felt like they just wanted to have an honest-to-god action scene. And I think that goes hand-in-hand -hand with the evolution of Rick Sanchez. Rick went from an incredibly smart asshole to an incredibly smart asshole -ish god. So it feels as if the team is experimenting with more ways to showcase just how indestructible Rick can be, and also how much they can rip off Inspector Gadget. Also, not Rick and Morty, but Solar Opposites has a great sort of reverse gory battle at the end of Episode 4, and I definitely wouldn't mind more scenes like that in the future. Amphibia! Amphibia is a show most people wouldn't expect to have action, but the team behind it has honestly been smart about slowly easing it into the show without throwing us off guard. For example, Anne currently has an arsenal of weapons, her tennis racket, a sword she kept from the Toads, and a magic sword she was granted in combat camp. That color coordinates with her calamity powers, but the entire planter family is shown to scrap, a much more prominent aspect of Season 2 as well. Hop Pop is out here pushing people with his frog throw. Sprig has a slingshot. Polly has bloodlust. Action has been present since Season 1, but I noticed it usually cranks up to 11 with Sasha, which makes sense as the character is second in command to an overly aggressive leader. Seriously, we have Sasha and Grime versus those burgers in Prison Break? Tell me you couldn't watch this all day. Sasha later takes on an utopian general, General Yunnan, in the episode Toad Catcher, which set a precedent for more swatchbuckling action, and the season 2 premiere even alludes to the idea of the show incorporating more action as the planners face off against animated crops that ultimately accumulate into Veggie Robo, that Anne also has the honor of taking down. Although it's not yet on a spectacular level of the Owl House or Rick and Morty, for some reason I really love the action in Amphibia. I think it goes into a similar reason I just gave for Rick Sanchez, but replace being a god with, well, being frogs. Because these are walking, talking, super intelligent frogs, there's so many ways for the crew to reinvent and recontextualize what a frog can do. More please! Last but not least, Craig of the Creek. Craig of the Creek should not be as insane as it is when it comes to action, but everyone who's been making the Kiss Next Door comparison since day one must feel validated. Despite things boiling down to playing in the creek, there have been some impressive moments of action. Even if it's a bit more sparse than these other shows, they still manage to be visually impressive. There's a brief moment where Kelsey faces off against the character Carter and the cardboard identity. Carter tries swinging at Kelsey and his cardboard fist just moves so good and satisfyingly fluid. There's a super brief action sequence in Sugar Smugglers, where Kelsey and the Green Poncho double team against Maya, best friend of the king. And the camera's even shaking around like an anime. Jesus Christ! Don't these kids have homework or something? Just kidding, season two is still in the summer. Season three pivots to fall. And Green Poncho and Maya even had their own clash in the past, as revealed in the episode into the over past. I feel like I just said past a lot. And again, it was just one of those moments where it's like, well, even though it's not Kiss Next Door, far from it, I'm still getting kids next door vibes because children are scrapping and they're pretty proficient with their weapons of choice. In conclusion, while there are still action cartoons rocking out and doing their own thing, I'm glad to see that action is also becoming a natural element in cartoons nowadays. It helps display what animation can be. Animation doesn't just have to be a serious action story or an episodic comedy. They can use the media of animation to tell a range of stories that include comedy, action, heartful moments, moments of pure horror, whatever the hell they want to be. Because animation is limitless and animation is power. Whether or not you care for action, I don't think anyone thinks it's bad that action is evolving as an element in cartoons, with serious weight to it both narratively and with visual execution. Unless you're like a Karen. Not every cartoon needs to be an action blockbuster, but it's nice to think that this could one day be openly on the table when pitching and developing shows. Also, I just like watching the funny drawings whack each other with fluid animation. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. 
What do you think? How do you feel about the rise of action animation in cartoons? Love it? Hate it? Why or why not? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RyanTubleVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AltricVox. We're also on Instagram. Help Dragon Girl by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Altric Vox, signing out.